Hey guys, so although the idea of leprechauns and fairies is considered to be, well, a fairy tale, there does exist a handful of very compelling artifacts, unearthed over the years, which have suggested the existence of an elusive race of tiny people. And although they were presumably wingless, judging by the relics found, they would be so small they could indeed be considered to look just like modern representations of fairies. A worn-in tiny shoe found by a remote sheep farmer on an ancient trail within the Bira Peninsula in Ireland. Black in color, the craftsmanship that had gone into creating the tiny piece of footwear for our giant hands would have been highly impressive. He was amazed to find that the shoe clearly shows signs of wear, particularly at the heel. In fact, although tiny, this shoe had indeed been well worn in by someone no bigger than a pencil. The farmer eventually gave the shoe to the local doctor and eventually it was passed to the Somerville family. The current whereabouts of the shoe is unknown, although it is rumored that it is in Munster in Ireland. At one point it was examined by scientists at Harvard University. They found it was indeed hand stitched by tiny hands using tiny stitches and well crafted tiny eyelets. It was also discovered to be made from mouse skin. The belief in fairies or tiny humans is known as fairy faith. It is still found throughout Europe and the UK. In some parts of the world such as Iceland, fairy faith is still very strong. Artifacts left or given by these tiny people have been documented on several occasions. The fairy woman's cloth of burst of fijal is but one example of a gift from these tiny beings. According to the legend attached to the tiny, unique relic, the wife of the district police superintendent and public prosecutor at the farm of Bursta Fijal in Vopnaf Jordur in the east of Iceland received this cloth as payment from a fairy woman whom she had midwifed. The cloth is now in the National Museum in Reykjavik. Thor Magnusson, who is the president's custodian of antiquities, says certainly it's a unique cloth. There are some other gifts too up and down the Atlantic coast of Europe, including the flag of Maclod, kept today at Dunvegan Castle. The most famous object is known as the Luck of Eden Hall, a cup that was won fairly from fairies by a member of the Musgrove family. Today the cup stands in the Victoria and Albert Museum. The cup, which is astoundingly beautiful, is surprisingly of eastern origins. Although many of the things mentioned could and have been put down to elaborate yet entertaining hoaxes, the fairy or leprechaun shoe found in the remotes of Ireland is one of those extremely rare artifacts that does indeed seem authentic. This may be why it is hidden away from certain individuals who would probably prefer it disappeared forever. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. Elongated skulls, along with their origins, are undoubtedly one of the most heavily debated areas within modern archaeology. Many independently funded researchers who have explored and subsequently exposed vast arrays of unusual and as yet inexplicable features surrounding a particularly few examples of these intriguing and incredibly puzzling artifacts. For regardless of known head-binding practices, a well-studied and historically an extremely common practice, thus one which modern science has an extensive understanding of, including the effect this had on the shape of the skull, makes any skull which endured these traditions are easily to identify post-mortem. The most commonly found incorporated wooden boards pressed upon the head, creating large flat areas along the frontal lobes. Pressing the brow area of the skull upward, this malformation creates a crease or bulge near the normal napping areas of the skull, as seen in these photos of remains currently claimed as a suspected alien found in Croatia. Yet due to this knowledge of malformation, we can easily identify that it is indeed of a homo sapien. This so-called crease is easily identifiable upon bone structure. However, as previously mentioned, there exists a particular few whose remains not only have an elongated cranium, but the individuals in which they belong not only possess said craniums undeniably formed via natural processes but are identical in appearance to millions of witness testimonies describing what we all now know as the greys. With huge eyes, long wide craniums, frames of a tiny stature and micro-thin pelvis, remains of tiny humanoids, possibly visitors to our planet, who may have crashed here, subsequently marooned upon our planet, 
is an account which has been told before. We have in the past explored the compelling story surrounding the Dropa discs, an ancient upark that, according to a number of individuals who have examined and tested them, tell this exact tale. Long barrows, granges, earthworks, and henges found across the United Kingdom all have rumors surrounding long-headed skulls being covered up after having been found at the sites. Passionately protected from trespassers, a vast number of the largest barrows have never been opened. 12-ton stones blocking the entrances, clearly suggesting they are buildings of tremendous importance, but without enormous multi-million pound machinery, permits, and most importantly, permission from the landowners, conveniently, all these incredible undug sites are set on private lands. We will probably never find what's inside, but many rumors abound, like those which circle Bella's Nap, tales which tell of more elongated skulls exhumed from the surrounding Earth during a normal archaeological exploration. Yet regardless of this seemingly meticulous suppression in the UK, an incredible find has nonetheless been unearthed in Crimea. Many of the intriguing features of the remains are the same characteristics which gave rise to the elongated skulls of Peru's popularity. Yet this skull still possesses its tiny, complete skeleton. The eye sockets, which once housed the creature's eyes, were enormous, and although the entire frame of the creature is of a small size, the lack of a pronounced pelvis would have made them very slender and would have emphasized the size of the cranium. It is a strong candidate for the only complete elongated skull remains in existence. We find the elongated skull highly compelling. Mr. John Hyatt, Director for Research and Innovation in Art and Design at Manchester Metropolitan University, has taken the plunge regarding what he believes is a miraculous discovery, risking his intellectual career in the pursuit of the truth. For the last few years, and completely in secret, John has been encountering some very strange creatures that, according to the theory of evolution, simply should not exist. Understandably, for a university lecturer to reveal he believes in what most accredit to fiction could have gotten John in a rather sticky position. However, thanks to reams of photographic evidence he has been quietly collecting and the sheer certainty he now has that the images are authentic proof of his experience, he has exposed to the world just what he believes he has found. In a small pocket of the English countryside known as the Rossendale Valley in Lancashire, John has publicly claimed a population of fairies somehow exists. After capturing numerous photographs of some rather curious-looking creatures within the area, he told the press he was shocked when he enlarged the images to reveal tiny flying human forms. Mr. Hyatt has posted some of his images on social media and says they have attracted much debate. An exhibition called Rossendale Fairies will be held at the Whitaker Museum in Whitaker Park in Rossendale, revealing his finds. Mr. Hyatt said the name is a nod to the famous story of the Cottingley Fairies. However, he admits the creatures he snapped are a long way from the characters depicted in the children's stories and hopes his pictures will change people's perceptions of them. I don't believe they are just smaller versions of us and go home and have a cup of tea at the end of the day, he says. And he isn't suggesting they have any special powers. From my experience, they were just enjoying themselves and having a little dance in the sunlight. What do you think about the photographic proof of the seemingly impossible? Just another hoax? In 1932, gold prospectors searching within the San Pedro Mountains of Wyoming would make a groundbreaking discovery, a find which, for a brief period of time, exposed to the world the past existence of a group of people, a secret, unexplainable race, which has been successfully covered up for over a century. Cast into the realm of folklore, this group of people could be attributed to tales of gnomes or hobbits. The once native Crow people spoke of their ferocious nature for many hundreds of years. No taller than 36 inches in height, according to William R. Corliss in his 1978 book Ancient Man, a Handbook of Puzzling Artifacts, citing the Anthropological Institute, Journal 6, 100, 1876. 
An ancient little people graveyard of vast proportions was once found in Coffey County. It was estimated that there were as many as 100,000 separate individuals buried there. And in 1932, two gold prospectors would thankfully expose the existence of the little people of Priori Mountain to the world. Deep within a mine on the mountain, they discovered a secret lair, a tomb, somehow placed deep within the rock face. Within this tomb, they found the mummified remains of a tiny humanoid. Now known as Pedro, according to Dr. Henry Shapiro, an anthropologist from the American Museum of Natural History, along with the several x-rays he made, proving his authenticity, Pedro was 65 years old when he died, and he had unfortunately suffered a terrible fall, which had dislocated several of the vertebrae in his back. It seemed to Dr. Shapiro, a head wound that he had apparently suffered some short time after may have been the result of his relinquished life, in a curious act of mercy by his fellow tribe members. The Crow tribe attest to these tiny people once being gifted warriors, feared by all those in the surrounding areas. They told of the little people murdering all who ventured near them, even decimating a group of 200 strong warriors who mistakenly trespassed into their territories during the night. Pedro ended up in a pharmacy in Wyoming, and for seven years he was a successful local attraction. One day, when an unusual businessman offered to buy him, after apparently paying a very large sum, the man disappeared with Pedro, and he has never been seen of again. The only existing mummy of the little people, it seems, was successfully confiscated during the late 1950s. To this day, it is not known where Pedro is, although for the person who locates his current residence, we have been made aware of a substantial cash prize for the person who can bring him back into the public arena, or at least enable further testing. If you know where Pedro is, please do get in touch. There is someone with a rather large present waiting for you.